Buongiorno, vi salutiamo e vi diamo il benvenuto qui a San Pablo entro le mura di Roma. Vi chiediamo di avere in mano il bollettino bilingue inglese e italiano per poter partecipare, soprattutto per poter vivere questa Santa Eucaristia con molta fede. Anche la omilia sta disponibile in italiano lì sul tavolino all'ingresso. Dopo il Santo Vangelo, prima della omilia, invitiamo a tutti i bambini fra 3 e 10 anni a venire qui davanti per ricevere la benedizione del reverendo padre Austin e poi loro vanno a lavorare alla Parish Hall. Sì? Vi invitiamo anche a partecipare alla Santa Comunione per ricevere il corpo e il sangue di Cristo recandosi qua. Se vuoi una benedizione basta incrociare le braccia e il sacerdote ti darà la santa benedizione. Anche c'è la comunione disponibile con il pane senza glutine. Di nuovo benvenuti a San Pablo entro le mura di Roma. Good morning everyone. Welcome to St. Paul's. It's wonderful to see you gathered here on this Sunday, this beautiful sunny Sunday. It's, it's wonderful to have you. Uh, I'm particularly uh, thankful for all the guests who are visiting us today for the first time. We welcome you to St. Paul's and hope that you will join fully with us in this service. We use this bulletin here, so hopefully you have one of those. It has English on the left hand side and Italian on the right. We do some things in English and Italian, like announcements. Uh, and the, the, the gospel. So please uh, be able to follow along as, as you can uh, using this bulletin, singing the hymns, praying the prayers with us. We invite you fully into this worship today. A quick note, uh, instead of after the collect, the children ages three to 10 will be coming up for a blessing right after the gospel and leaving right before the sermon. So um, looking forward to welcoming all of our children for today's program. They'll go to the parish hall to then be able to begin their program and come back and join us at the peace. You're invited to receive communion with us here at St. Paul's. We come forward during the season to receive the bread, and then you're also uh, welcome to receive the cup or also not to receive it. Communion in one kind is totally fine. If it's not your custom or preference to receive these gifts, you can come forward and ask for a blessing by, by crossing your arms like this, and you'll receive a blessing in God's name. We have gluten-free host available to any who would wish. If you raise your hand, we'll make sure you get one. Welcome again to St. Paul's. Glad to have you.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of King Zedekiah of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king Judah where King Zedekiah of Judah had confined him. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Anamel, son of your uncle Shalom, is going to come to you and say, Buy my field that is at Anathoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Anamel came to me in the court of the guard in accordance with the word of the Lord and said to me, buy my field, that is as Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that it was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field of Anathoth from my cousin Anamel and weighed out the money to him, 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witness, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sell deed of purchase containing the terms and conditions and the open copy, and I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, son of Maseiah, in the presence of my cousin Anamel, in the presence of the witness who signed the deed of purchase, 
and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. In their presence, I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Take these deeds, both this sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthware jar in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and field and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. There is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and Harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, men of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings 
and the Lord of Lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be healthy or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. This is the word of the Lord. Il Santo Vangelo di nostro Signore Gesù Cristo secondo Luca. Gloria a te, Cristo Signore. Gesù disse, c'era un uomo ricco che si vestiva di porpora e di visso e ogni giorno si divertiva splendidamente. Un mendicante chiamato Lazzaro stava alla sua porta, pieno di ulceri, e bramoso di sfamarsi con quello che cadeva dalla tavola del ricco. E perfino i cani venivano a lecargli le ulceri. Avvenne e il povero morì, e fu portato dagli angeli nel seno di Abramo. Morì anche il ricco, e fu sepolto. E nella destra, Essendo i tormenti, alzò gli occhi e vide da lontano Abramo e Lazzaro nel suo seno ed esclamò Padre Abramo, abbi pietà di me e manda Lazzaro a intingere la punta del dito nell'acqua per rinfrescarmi la lingua perché sono tormentato in questa fiamma. Ma Abramo disse, figlio, ricordati che tu nella tua vita hai ricevuto i tuoi beni e che Lazzaro similmente ricevette i mali. Ma ora qui egli è consolato e tu sei tormentato. Oltre a tutto questo, fra noi e voi, e posto una grande voragine perché quelli che vorrebbero passare di qui a voi non possano, né di là si passi da noi. Ed egli disse, ti prego dunque, o oh padre, che tu lo mandi a casa di mio padre, perché ho cinque fratelli, affinché li avverta e non vengano anche loro in questo luogo di tormento. Abramo disse, Hanno Mosè e i profeti, ascoltino quelli. Ed egli, no, padre Abramo, 
ma se qualcuno dai morti va a loro si ravvedranno Abramo rispose se non ascoltano Mosè e i profeti non si lasceranno persuadere neppure se uno dei morti risuscita Jesus said to the Pharisees there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, Remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord of Christ. I invite the children to come up for a blessing in the congregation to be seated. Lord, I ask your blessing upon these, your servants. Help them to learn and to grow, and help us to learn and grow through their eyes and to see your kingdom as they see it and to follow where they lead. We ask this in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessings in your your lesson. Bye. We continue our exploration of this section of Luke's Gospel today and find Jesus once again contrasting prevailing ideas about wealth with the richness of God's reign. Last week we talked about how wealth can be an incredible tool when used to build up human community, but it becomes a horrible master if given our ultimate allegiance. Today we're introduced to an unnamed rich man and Lazarus, a poor man, who are the central characters in Jesus' parable. The movement of the parable is rather straightforward. The rich man feasts all day while poor Lazarus, who has been placed at the rich man's gate, to wait for what was the customary patronage of leftovers. He waits there and he goes hungry. 
only the dogs, creation's compassionate emissaries, seem to care for Lazarus's plight, licking his wounds when the rest of the world seems to have abandoned him. Both men die, and suddenly, just like Mary's Magnificat foreshadowed, their roles are are reversed. Suddenly, it's the rich man who is suffering in the flames of Hades, while Lazarus is reconnected to the family of Abraham. And even though the rich man begs Abraham to send Lazarus like a servant with water to cool his tongue, and even though the rich man pleads for Abraham to send a warning to his still living brothers about what awaits them after death if they refuse to heed Moses and the prophets, even though he does all these things and he asks these, Abraham is unable to oblige him. There are all sorts of details of this parable that I find interesting. Jesus has been telling the parables of the last few weeks to primarily Pharisee audiences, the dominant sect of Judaism during Jesus' day. But another sect that was smaller, but no less powerful, were the Sadducees, who were known for their wealth, political influence, and aristocratic standing as keepers of the temple. The Sadducees were not only wealthy, but they also did not believe in the kind of afterlife our parable today assumes, a realm where actions in this life affect outcomes in the next. Perhaps Jesus' nameless rich man is a Sadducee. Not only surprised that his wealth in this world has given way to the fire of Hades, but amazed that the realm exists at all. And then there's the matter of the rich man having no name, while Lazarus does. It should strike us as odd that someone as important and wealthy as the rich man should go nameless, as if his memory has been erased from the annals of time, while Lazarus, who languished in hunger and squalor, is instead remembered for all time. That's simply not the way that history works, as we know from our copious records of powerful and wealthy figures preserved by the machinery of empire. One quick tour of this city, and you're going to get lots of names of people who are remembered in that way. But Jesus is making the point that this is the way the kingdom of God works. And he's encouraging us to prioritize our lives according to its metrics rather than those of the prevailing worldview. These are just a few of the details that interest me in this parable. However, upon deep reflection and a powerful Bible study with fellow clergy at this week's Clericus clergy retreat in Frankfurt. I believe that the core of Jesus' call to us in this parable is to a way of life that leaves behind practices of separation for the green pastures of communion. One of the most painful moments of the parable is when we learn that the rich man actually knows Lazarus' name. It's not just some sore-covered, faceless man whom he has denied the fruits of his table and the warmth of his home. Lazarus is known to the rich man which makes his choice to maintain his social distance that much more horrifying. 
The separation that existed between the men on earth is manifested as an uncrossable chasm in the afterlife. And while we may console ourselves that the resurrected Jesus can bridge any divide, the parable is a stark warning for all who truly hear it to rethink and reorder their lives in ways that shrink rather than widen the divisions that exist between human beings. I'll never forget the words of <clears throat> Father Bill Galati, the rector who taught our confirmation class many years ago. Sin is not primarily about bad thoughts or actions, as important as such things may seem. <clears throat> but rather, sin is separation. Separation that breaks down relationships between peoples, that breaks down the relationship between an individual and God, and that can divide even one's very soul. The 30 years I've spent reflecting on this teaching have revealed its truth. It is not the wealth that the rich man has which creates the separation the sinful chasm between them. Rather, it is, it is his unwillingness to see Lazarus's life and situation as intimately bound to his own and his inability or his choice to act accordingly. Jesus' movement <clears throat> that began in Bethlehem, grew to maturity in Nazareth and made its way from Galilee to Jerusalem with miracles and teaching, has at its core the radical reimagining of relationships. Instead of seeing the wealthy as blessed and the poor as cursed, Jesus asks us to find common purpose by serving together. If one member of the body suffers, we all suffer. If one member of the body feasts, we all feast. Rather than live by worldly wisdom, that would keep us apart and keep us unable to realistically address the world's greatest challenges together. Jesus calls us to believe and act as if we are truly one. In all our glorious, challenging, God-given diversity. the more we live into our interconnectedness, the more we allow the grace of God to overcome our sins, be they institutional, tribal, or individual. And the more our collective efforts as the people of God are focused on sharing God's bounty, rather than hoarding it, the more our current reality will begin to approximate the heaven for which we long. Or as the letter of First Timothy said, the more we will see the life that is really life. When we do that, then the words of the prophet Isaiah will shine like a beacon and renew our shared call. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets, 
to live in. May you find ways to truly see and to share your daily bread with those who hunger and hurt today. May your passion be renewed for breaking down the numerous dividing walls that have been erected to maintain the illusion that we are separate rather than connected in Christ. And may the same God who licked the sores of Lazarus, who raised the crucified Jesus to resurrected life, and who infused a community of rich and poor servants alike with the Holy Spirit to call a separated world back into communion, may the triune God be your ever-present guide and companion in this life and in the next. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of
In the silences, please add your personal prayers and thanksgivings aloud or in silence. Sisters and brothers, let us set our hope on God and pray to our God saying, God, our refuge and stronghold, we put, put our, our trust, trust in, in you. you. We pray for your one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. May we and your whole church pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. God, our refuge and stronghold, we put, put our, our trust, trust in you. you. We pray for the leaders of this and every nation. Remind us that they are fallible human beings, fellow children of the earth. May they put their trust in you even as we trust in you for our help. We especially pray today for this nation of Italy as people go to the polls asking that you will be with those who go to vote so that your will may be done in this country as it is in heaven. God, our refuge and stronghold, we put, we put our, our, trust our trust in you. In you. Creating God, you made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them. Make us good stewards of your bounty, that there may be food enough for all who hunger. Lord, I give you thanks for those who spend their days plowing the soil, caring for seedlings, doing the work that it takes to bring food to our tables. Help us to be good stewards of that hard work and sacrifice so that your world may not know hunger. God, our refuge and stronghold, we put, we put our, our trust, trust in, you. in you. Open our eyes to see the poor at our gates. Give us compassion for those suffering in our community. You, O oh Lord, care for the stranger. You sustain the orphan and the widow. May our work reflect your heart. God, our refuge and stronghold, we put, we put our, our trust, trust in, you. in you. We pray for the hungry, for the sick, and for the dying. Grant comfort and mercy to those who now experience evil things. God, our refuge and stronghold. We, we put, put our, our trust, trust in you. We pray for those who have died. May all the departed find new life in the presence of their God, the one who alone has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light. God, 
God, our refuge and stronghold. We put, we put our, our trust, trust in you. I invite you to pray together with me a prayer for peace. O oh God, who would, who would fold, fold both, both heaven and, and earth, earth in, in a single piece, piece. Let, let the, the design, design of thy great love redeem the waste of our wraths and sorrows, and give peace to thy church, peace among nations, peace in our dwellings, and, and peace, peace in our in hearts. hearts. Through thy, thy Son, Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Siedete vi, per favore. Vi chiediamo di prendere visione dell'allegato che si trova dentro il nostro bollettino bilingue. Lì troverete tutte le attività, gli annunci della nostra comunità di San Paolo entro le mura di Roma. Per la prossima domenica stiamo invitando a tutti quanti per insieme celebrare 30 anni della fondazione della comunità latinoamericana di Roma. E quindi quel giorno ci sarà soltanto un'eucaristia bilingue alle 10.30. Dopo tutti siete invitati a passare alla nostra cripta per condividere il pranzo comunitario. E luego chi ha piacere può rimanere per l'atto sociale. Anche il mercoledì 5 ottobre si ricomincia con questa attività bellissima della nostra comunità di San Paolo che si chiama Wednesday with the Walls. Quindi è un'attività dove leggiamo contempliamo, meditiamo la parola di Dio insieme. Inoltre c'è cena per tutti, cena gratis per tutti. Inizia alle 18 nel secondo piano della nostra chiesa. L'ingresso è per via Napoli 58. Siete tutti invitati a questa bellissima attività. It's wonderful to see you today. As Francisco just said in Italian, I'm going to say a couple of things in uh, English to invite you to participate fully in a lot of wonderful celebrations that are coming up. First of all, um, next week we have this 30th anniversary celebration of the Latin American community here at St. Paul's 
We'll have one Eucharist at 10.30, and then we'll go directly to eat a magnificent lunch together down in the crypt. So please cancel any other lunch plans, and please, please stay with us for that celebration. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great party. Don't miss it. One feast, we all feast, right? So, but those of you who are only here this Sunday, do not fret, because after the service, we have coffee hour outside filled with wonderful items and conversations. So you can join us for that and get a foretaste of what the meal will be like next week. And you're always invited back. Uh, I would also like to point out on the, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, the 5th of October, we'll resume our normal Wednesday schedule. Every Wednesday, we do a thing called Wednesday Within the Walls, and we come in through the door on Vianopoli 58 and go up to the second floor where we share some prayer and a meal, a simple meal, but a wonderful meal, and get to be together for a little bit under two hours. So if you are able to join us for that time, it starts at 6 o'clock, and we normally end up before 8 o'clock. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to come and learn together and to grow together and to be fed together. I think that's it. Um, Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offerings, and come into God's courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, 
and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Idone di Dio per il popolo di Dio.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Andiamo nel mondo alienati dalla forza dello spirito. Let us go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of the spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Prendiamo grazie a Dio. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>